So as it was, let me put the timing for myself too. So I think I'm the moderator, I can speak more. All right, so we heard a whole lot about microplastics and I wanna to talk to you today is a particular type of microplastics, which are microfibers and how we can work with industry to address that issue. And I will try to convince you by the end of this talk that we are addressing actually the, the very top of the pyramid, like the uh, product chain. So back to the, um, the fundamentals. The main point here is that we all believe, and you have all sit there in the front looking at the ocean, how vast it is, how huge it is, how deep it is, and we all believe that it can absorb everything. We can dunk in it, and it will just continue to absorb everything we put in it. And that's not new. Historically speaking, cities will go out, dump their old um, train cars or their old containers for tanks. This is not new. This has been going on for decades. It's a mindset that has been installed years ago because of the immenseness of the oceans. This is of course true for plastics. The ocean represents the bigger part of the world. We believe that plastics can, are so small that it will do nothing to this biggest component of our planet. So this is an illusion because we know very well from the earlier talk that um, the ocean cannot absorb everything. We know, of course, that these islands stay there for a long time, way more, way longer than the lifetime that you and I can uh, be here on Earth, and that maybe your kids and grandkids and all the generations who follow will still see the bottle of coke that you dumped in the ocean years ago. So this is not right. So we know where they go. We have seen many pictures of that. The beaches where you guys want to go, the, the deep sea. The big question is that where they come from. We know that they come from our human activities. But there is something that we don't really talk about. The textiles. What you and I wear every day. Textiles contain plastics, and therefore there are some definitions that need to be made. By micro, of course, we intend to say it's small, and it's smaller than five millimeter, or usually smaller than five micron. Five micron is about 20 times smaller than the diameter of your hair. Small. Invisible. The invisible thread. So what happens is that we believe that you have microplastics, so you start from the big bottle, and eventually degrade over years and years and years and gets fragmented into small pieces, which is true, and it takes years. But you also have the microfibers, the synthetic microfibers, the ones that are generated small already to begin with. They don't come from a bigger item, except that the bigger item is only what you wear. Microfibers are small pieces of plastic or synthetic material polyester, spandex, nylon, all these materials that make what we wear. So as you wash your clothes, these microfibers are being generated. There used to be that washing machines will have filters like your dryer will have. And that's not the case anymore because they will clog too often. Why? Well, they clog because we they generate microfibers. So now we don't stop microfibers from entering the waterways. As they enter the waterways, they are so small they are easily inge ingested by the marine organisms and enter the food web. We are part of the ecosystem that I call Earth. We are part, we, are, we have water flowing through us, we have food breathe, those microfibers are found in the atmosphere, we breathe them, they're found in the drains, we 
bring them. They are found everywhere. More than 80% of the water we drink, either water fountain or bottled water, water contains microfibers. The coffee you had this morning probably had microfibers. No, no offense. <laughs> it was still the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about the Starbucks coffee, but. Um, <laughs> so the microfibers are an issue, and it's an invisible issue. The problem with microfibers is that they are very reactive. They are made to react. When you use, you go for a hike, and you want to wear your very synthetic outwear and garment, it is because it has properties that it better repel water, or absorb water, or can absorb the, all the dust if you clean. Microfibers have a very defined geometry that makes them reactive and absorb even more of the contaminants than microplastics can do. There is one hope, though, is that they are fluorescent. And because of their fluorescence, we are able to detect them quantify them and know where they are. I will not talk about this aspect today, but my lab is actively working on this and developing technologies that we can quantify microfibers throughout the entire world, basically. We now have samples that we collected at the North Pole, which unfortunately contains microfibers. We work together with the SWIM, which is this French guy, we all know French people are a bit crazy, so the guy decided to swim from Japan to San Francisco and have a team on the sailboat next to him that will do science. And every day they collect liters of water for us. We work with many with Greenpeace and many other explorer club related expeditions to quantify and map what where water contains microfiber. And it is not just to say, all right, we know where microfibers are. It is only by understanding where they go that we can start coming up with policies and management and it can bring awareness to people. We, need it. we don't even know exactly what drives the distribution of microfibers yet. So we saw that pyramid, <coughs> that inverted pyramid. If you want to do at the removal part, the very bottom was removal, I think. You can go to Patagonia and buy this uh, Guppy plant, which is basically a giant filter that you can put your synthetic garment in, and as you do the washing, the microfibers will remain in the, in the filter, and then you dispose of the filter. The question is that after that, what happens? <laughs> That's something we still don't know. So we decided to work with the industry on the basis, the very top of the pyramid. And for that, we are associated with lensing, which is a company based in Austria. And uh, Lensing is one of the leaders in manufacturing fibers, but not synthetic fibers. Fibers that are based on cellulose. Cellulose is a natural product that degrades fully in the environment. Lensing came up with different chemistries around the cellulose that provides these fibers, these tensiles and veil cells and others that have properties that compete with nylon and polyester and so forth. So maybe we will not have a complete shift right now, but Patagonia and Prada and all those clothing companies that are for outdoorsy people are already including those fibers in their material at increasing uh, amount. So they innovate for balance. As I said, they do use cellulose so that everything goes through the circle. They use trees, they make the fibers, they make your clothing, and then your clothing sheds fibers which degrade, and then you can basically get rid of your clothing and it will go back into being fully dull. So this is my story about lensing. Um, the rest of the panel will be more focused on pragmatic solutions. If you have any questions about the uh, aspect of the microfibers, uh, please.